G'day guys, today we're back in the shed for another yarn. It's been a been a bit between drinks, got a new place, uh, this is my new shed so I'm just kitting it out at the moment, getting all the fishing gear in, hence why there hasn't been a lot of videos of late but I'm starting to get back into it now, got to get the shed set up. It's all come together so today I thought I'd sit down, I get a lot of questions about my uh, tackle, uh, rods, reels, lines, lures, uh, especially on Instagram and especially with swim baiting for Murray Cod. So we're coming, we're in winter now, winter's just started, prime time for swim baiting for Murray Cod. So I th thought I'd sit down, just run you through my two uh, combos that I'll be using all winter. Um, I only need two combos, I used to run a lot more, but these days I only run the two really, uh, especially when all I'm doing when chasing Murray Cod in winter is throwing swim baits or sometimes top water, I can still do it with these rods. It's not like in summer or even in start of autumn where you might be throwing, you know, you could have eight different lures, spinner baits, chatter baits, top water, swim baits, vibes, etc. So you need a few more rods, but at the moment, winter, swim baiting for cod, that's all I'm doing. So these are the two combos that I run. Um, the first one is a, the rod is a Tatula seven foot six uh, swim bait rod. Uh, I've had this thing for oh, a couple of years now. Um, love the rod, perfect. Can throw up to 220 grams, so um, it can throw pretty much everything. You know, if I do want to go, if I do want to throw something light, like a real half ounce chatterbait or something on the odd chance, then I can still do it with this rod, but it can throw anything over 220 grams. So the lure that I've got on there at the moment is a Jackal, Giganterelle, uh, you'd love a dollar for every Murray Cod that's been caught on one of these. Uh, probably one of the most well-known lures, the Jackal Range, you know, the Gania, the Gantrill, Giganterelle. They're proven, they do catch fish. That there is the um, Charlie the Carp pattern that's exclusive to Outback Angler. Really like it, I've already caught some nice fish on that lure there. So that's the rod. Uh, the reel is a Tatula 300. Uh, again, I've been using this reel for a bit over 12 months. Love the reel. Um, I used to run a lot of, you know, Tatula 200s, HDs, and even the 150s. Uh, but since since the 300s come out, I, I probably won't ever go back to throwing a 200 or smaller in a dam situation. They're great for the rivers and for the small lures, but in the impoundments, I'm always chasing those bigger fish, throwing those big lures. Uh, so you'd be mad not to go for a 300 size reel or a bit bigger. Um, with a 200 or smaller, when you're throwing things like your gigantrels, your big ass lures, uh, it can put a, yeah, it, it's not it's not the right way to do it with a small reel. And you feel it, it feels like, it just doesn't feel nice when you bring the lure back in. It feels like you're dragging sock through the water. So you want to have the right reel to match the, the, the lure that you use. And that's where these, this 300 comes in and even bigger sizes. Uh, on my two combos, I run the same lines. Uh, I run 50 pound J Braid Grand in the multicolor and a 60 pound J Thread Fluorocarbon Leader. Now, on both rods, I run that. I've run that combo for oh, a fair while now and it's never let me down. I have been flirting with the idea, a f few ideas online. So, the obvious one and the, a question I get asked a lot is do I run straight through fluoro? Well, I don't. I have flirted with the idea a lot of times, but especially over the last 12 months, and especially when it comes to swim baiting. Uh, whenever I do miss a hit or miss a fish, I think, oh, maybe I should be running straight through fluoro, but uh, like I've just been on a great run over the last couple of months where I just haven't missed any fish uh, using the braid. I, I love how the braid feels. You know, you're so sensitive when something touches it you know what's going on, you can feel your lure, you know what's going on, and I know, although I don't have any experience using the straight through fluoro, I just think I'm gonna lose that. Now, the guys that are running, there's a lot of guys running for Murray Cod now, and they are having great results with it. Um, I'm not denying that, but I, personally, I'm, I've only miss, I don't miss many fish with the braid. It's when I do that I do consider the fluoro, but at the moment I'm on a good run, so I'm gonna keep running the braid. Um, until I do get in a bad patch and then I might try it. It's inevitable that I will try the straight through furrow down the track, but for the moment and for this season, I'm just gonna keep running the braid. 
The other thing that I do play with every now and again is running a mono leader instead of a fluoro leader. Uh, Jinkai, Jinkai um, fluoro, uh, Jinkai mono is the mono that I sometimes use. Um, I was running some mono on 50 pound and actually had one give give out on me. So I've gone away from that. So in the Jinkai I like to go 60 or 80 pound. Um, the reason I like the mono is it's so much easier to tie knots um, with the 60 pound fluoro, um, just with your FGs and tying onto your, onto your clips and, and your lures, sometimes not that confident in it. Whereas a mono, not a cup, it's so much, comes together so much easier and, and binds together a lot better. So that's one reason, the main reason. The other one is it's a uh, bit of stretch as well. So kind of what the fluoro would do, you kind of going that way, taking a step towards that straight through fluoro by actually having a rod length and mono leader is a lot more stretch in it than the fluoro. So it's another reason um, I have gone to it and come and then gone back away from it uh, for times over the last sort of 12, 18 months. But at the moment I'm back on the fluoro train, 60 pound fluoro. Uh, the second combo that I'll be running is a TD Black, Daiwa TD Black, seven foot nine mother rod. Um, I've only had this in maybe six months, bloody love it. Uh, pinnacle rod, it can throw, it's weighted to throw up to 300 grams, so whatever the biggest lures I've got, I can throw on this thing. Uh, matched up to that, I've got the new uh, Tatula 400 reel. Um, had this reel for four months, has not missed a beat, it's my favorite reel. I love the Tatula 300, I love the 400 even more. This combo here is, I'm pretty much throwing this, I'd say 80% of the time at the moment. I have my biggest lures on it, so at the moment, I've got the 10 inch mag draft there. Um, been having a lot of success on this thing, hence why it's tied on, and hence why I'm using this combo so much at the moment. Other things, I've got like big bull shads and big glide baits and stuff. If I'm ever throwing that, it goes on this rod, so. There, there really isn't a lure that's too big for this rod, you know. A big 10 inch mag graph will, you know, the wrong rod for that lure, you'll find out pretty quick because you cannot cast it. But with this thing, you can still throw it like it's nothing, just whip in easy as. So, love that combo, then that's my second one. Again, same line, um, 50 pound J grade, 60 pound fluoro. Now, we'll. Show you. So they're the two rules that I'm using at the moment the most. Um, I do swap and change a bit, but yeah, I've been having good success between these two rules at the moment. I like to throw the big stuff in winter, you know. I used to always run the gantrules and ganiers, and sometimes it's good to run the smaller things. But chasing those big cod, I just feel that the bigger the lure, the more it intrigues them, and the more you'll get follows out of the fish, the bigger the lure. And that's just from experience over the last six months using uh, the live scope, um, yeah, you just, the bigger the lure, the more intrigued the fish get and the more mesmerized they seem to get by it and the more, the more they'll commit to hitting the lure. Um, on all my lures at the moment, I'm running owner ST41 hooks. Um, I've swapped and changed my hooks, you know, round and round and round over the years and since I've gone to these in the last six months, I cannot fault them. I used to be an advocate for using the strongest hook possible, but start, started to miss some fish, and I do think it's better to have a hook that's still strong, so these are a two times strong hook, but they're gonna pin fish, they're a lighter gauge, so they're gonna pin fish a lot better. And with a cod having, although they're such a big fish, they've got such a hard mouth, and sometimes it can be hard to get a hook in there and you know the amount of times that I've landed a big fish and it's only just been pinned in the mouth or just by a bit of skin and on one of these hooks whereas if I had something like a I don't know a Raptor Z from BKK I might have missed that fish you know a lot of the time 90 99% of the time it probably won't matter what hook you use but yeah it's that it's that time that you do get that 130 hit it and it might only just clip the side of its mouth that I reckon these hooks are really coming to play. So ever since I started using these, uh, really, I don't think, I've, I can't remember dropping a fish. I've obviously missed hits, but once the fish is on, I haven't lost one. They're only two times strong, have not had one bend out.
can't recommend them enough. The other hook that I do run a bit is the mustard. Uh, the mustard, I don't know what they're called. Just some mustard ultra points. I've got a few on the wall behind me. Um, they're three times strong. I do like them as well. Uh, the thing you'll notice about both those hooks is they're black. I do prefer to use a black hook these days as well instead of using a chrome. I think it all matters uh, when you're chasing these big fish. Um, you want everything to be right. So Gigantral, got two two O's on that. Uh, the mag draft, I, I've got a special way of rigging up these mag drafts, a bit different than everyone else, but two O on the front, one O on the back. The other thing that I do these days on my two combos is run a mustard clip. They are called the fast hatch clip, that's them, the mustard fast hatch clip in a size, size four is my favorite. So size four mustard fast hatch clip. Now, no clips are sort of, you either love them or you hate them. Um, everyone's got a story where a clip's failed. Uh, but you know, personally, since I've been running these, I haven't had an issue. Um, it just makes taking the lure off and on so much easier. So if I do want to swap, only having the two combos, this is another reason for only having the two combos because I can just swat, swat, uh, switch a lure out so much quicker. So it's literally just twist the clip and it's off. And then you just put another lure on. It's so much easier than having to retire a loop knot or whatnot. The other good thing about it is you don't have to retie your leaders all the time because your leader, only when you catch a fish and it engulfs it, that you might get some rasping on the line that you'll need it, you'll start losing lengths of your leader. But for the majority of the time, as long as you've got a rod length, if you're not getting snagged and stuff, that rod length leader can last you, you know, months. So, love those clips. The way that I am tying those clips on is called a polymer knot. So from a fluoro leader to the clip, polymer knot, check that out. Copper got me under that knot, it is pinnacle, you know. I used to just run straight little uni and blood knots and every now and again they'd give way. Polymer knot, haven't had a problem with it. So, especially to these clips, can't beat the polymer knot. Righto, guys, um, there's a look at me combos, just a quick little video tonight. Um, you know, nothing, nothing that most people won't know, but you know, I do get questions a lot of the time about what I'm running, why I'm running it. Um, obviously I am associated with Daiwa, so I do predominantly run all the Daiwa kit, um, but I wouldn't use it if I didn't, didn't really like it and I didn't believe it and I didn't trust it because, you know, we're out there sometimes grinding for a long, long time to get one here. And when you get a one hit from a big cod, you want it every all your gear to be top notch and up to scratch so something doesn't let you down when that fish does hit. Anyway guys, I'll try and get more videos out to you soon. Uh, I've got the shed set up now. Need to get some lighting and everything sorted, but it's all coming together. I'm gonna to start doing Guru Theories uh, videos from the shed, so talking about personal, personal theories on the fish uh, down the track. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've got something out of it, and I'll see you in the next one.